Good morning.
Good morning, church. While we're standing, can we turn to the book of James? Verse 1, beginning at verse 19. The book of James. Chapter 1. Beginning at verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Where, wherefore, lay apart all filthiness, super filthy of naughtiness, and receive with meekness and engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving our deceiving your own self. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. This man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridle not his tongue, but deceive his own heart, this man religion is vain. Pure religion, undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. I have read James chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 19 to 27. May the Lord have blessing to the readers and the hearers of his word. Good morning, saints. You can sit down. Anyone in the best of views, let them in, ushers. I say good morning again, saints. I would like you to consider these words from Psalms 145. I will exalt my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise and exalt your name forever and ever. Will you please pray with me? Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, which sits in the throne with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on the right-hand side of you, hearing our cries out to you this morning as we pray to you, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. We ask you to continue giving us your grace and your mercy and your everlasting love. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we know you gave your only begotten Son for those that trust and believe in you and know that you are the way to heaven. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we can't say enough. We could spend the rest of our lifetimes here explaining to those individuals your love. But dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank your son, Jesus Christ, which hung, bled, and died on that cross at Calvary, taken down, put in that old tomb and buried, but rose on the third day with all power and might in his hands. Only you, God, was able to do that. The only God that has been able to do that. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, you gave that power off onto your son. And even though he rose on the third day, he still walked this earth for 40 days spreading your word. 
Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we just can't thank you enough. Dear Lord, we just thank you for the Holy Spirit that you allow to help us, to allow it to dwell within our souls, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. For that person that might be sitting out there in the pews this morning, that may not know which way is up, but just tilt your head up and look to the God where the sun comes from. Come from the hills, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. We know you rain down on us. And all our help comes from you, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. All we have to do is humble our hearts, humble our minds, and humble our souls, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. And just be still and just wait and be quiet and just listen to your heart. And listen to your words, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. Because each and every day you give us a blessing. Just to open our eyes and see another beautiful, glorious day. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, someone did not have that opportunity this morning. You called them home, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. And they listened to you and came. But dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we know the ones that are still here. That are bereaving over their loss of their loved ones, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. Touch them in a mighty special way. We know you have the peace and the comfort they can give to them. That have them hold them up and keep them going, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. But dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we must all grow to love and trust and believe in you. We know that, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, but we know that you entrust in us to be lights and beacons of light on the hill to go out and spread your words throughout the nations, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. We just thank you, and we can't thank you enough. But dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we start off this service this morning by just saying hallelujah. Hallelujah, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, because we just thank you. We just love to be in your house, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. We just love that you brought us through another week. But dear Lord, Heavenly Father, touching us deep down in our souls and blessing us, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. But we just can't thank you enough. But dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless the shepherd of this house and his family and allow him to continue doing your works, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. We bless each and every one of Second Baptist, all our friends and family that are here in the sound of my voice. And those that are on the way and those that could not be here this morning, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we just love you and you love us so much that we just sit back and wonder and marvel sometimes, dear Lord, Heavenly Father. But the whole thing is the love that you give to us that we should give to each and every one of us. But dear Lord Heavenly Father, we just thank you. And then dear Lord Heavenly Father, give us the strength, determination, and wisdom to go out and spread your word. This day, touch someone there in a special way, dear Lord Heavenly Father. But we just thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, which is love in our hearts. And everyone in the church say amen. Hymn number 41, Oh, I Want to Live. Let's all stand, please.
Come on and give the Lord praise. Come on and give him glory. Somebody ought to be happy in Jesus this morning. We come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with a praise on our lips. If you're in church, you might as well have church. Somebody give him glory. Somebody give him praise. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. There to see forever of his saving grace. Somebody ought to shout glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, won't you take it just about 10 seconds and give God the highest praise you can give him right now. Shake somebody up. Shake the devil up. Shake your neighbor up. Hey! Bless the Lord. Go on and shake that neighbor up. Put a praise in them. Hey! Hey! My, my, my. God's been to me just excuse me right now I don't want to step on your feet I don't want to step on your pocketbook but just, just excuse me right now because God's just been too good to me and right now I just feel a praise on the inside of me hallelujah bless the Lord bless the Lord my 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 Sit down if you can. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. Some of y'all should have some hot seats right now. You, you just can't sit down.
Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. My God, my God. The presence of the Lord is in this place. We have entered into his presence and his glory is being revealed right now. Hallelujah. I, I told y'all after that sermon a couple of weeks ago that we're going to continue today that it's going to take your worship to another, another place. Hallelujah. Your concept of worship. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Sister Webb, amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good morning, First Lady Dawn. I would like to say happy birthday to you. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has allowed you to celebrate another birthday on Thursday, February 14th, and we thank him for it. And on behalf of the Second Baptist Church family, we would like to show our love to you as an expression to you for allowing you to celebrate another birthday. And again, we say, happy birthday. And may the Lord allow you to celebrate many more, as many as what we celebrated last week, Amen. which was 100 years. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We celebrated 100 years of life with Sister Wright on last week. If Sister Dawn looks as good as Sister Wright at 100 years old, good diggity dog. <laughs> Amen. All right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Youth advisors, come on. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord, Second Baptist. Praise the Lord, Second Baptist. To God be the glory. It is my joy to announce that we will be having our first event for 2019 for the youth uh, ministry. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The event, formerly known as First Fridays, will now be held on fourth Friday of every month. So if you have anything on your calendar, I suggest that you clear it up and pencil us in for the fourth Friday of every month. Okay? Praise the Lord. Um, this night, we will get together on February the 22nd at 7 p.m. We will come together to, uh, the night will be about discovery and exploration. The youth leaders are going to help you to answer the question, what can I do for Jesus? So whether you're coloring in pre-K or in high school and college doing term papers, you can still set aside some time for the Lord. Amen. 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 So do me a favor real quick. Look to your left and look to your right. The person that you are sitting next to was probably a part of a youth ministry at some time in their life. Maybe a long, long time ago. <laughs> but I'll digress. <laughs> But they are where you are now. They are actually where you are now. They started out with you, where you are now. And they are blessed in the Lord, and they are still in church to this very day. So we thank God for that. So Youth of Second Baptist, we need, to, we need you in order to help shape this ministry into the vision that God has for it. So uh, the youth leaders have come up with some activities for you, such as volunteering, outreach, fundraising events, and just basically being used of God in every way he sees fit. This ministry won't only consist of work. We also want to go on outings and take some trips. 
and maybe go bowling or see a movie together. We want you to fortify your relationship with other Christ, youth for Christ, and youth believers because we know how hard it can be to find friends that are saved. Amen. Amen. So, so the youth advisors are here to give you all the tools that you will need to learn in areas of ministry that you are best suited for and to help you with all the gifts that God has given you because God has given us all special gifts and we have to utilize our gifts to bless the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this Friday, we are all going to put on lab, co lab coats and goggles and get busy exploring. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to have a little Skittles lab for the little kiddos, a slime and putty lab, and a t-shirt design lab. For those of you, you might want to design a t-shirt for when we go on those outings. Amen. Amen. So come on, young people of Second Baptist, to our youth ministry event on February the 22nd. That's this Friday at 7 p.m. to 8.30. If you are not here to pick up your kids at 8.30, they will be outside. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so repeat after me, Second Baptist. What can I do for Jesus? Amen. Amen. We're going to love Jesus and we're going to love people. Amen. 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 We do want our youth to come out, bring out your youth, bring out your grandchildren, and send them, bring them out, send them out, uh, drop them off. We are redirecting our youth ministry. Uh, because our youth are dealing with so much more today than, they, than we ever dealt with. Uh, and so we're trying, trying to redirect and refocus to deal with some of the issues and things they are dealing with in school. And that's why we're addressing our high school students. We're addressing our college students. So we want you to even come out for that. So it's not just youth night. There's young adults also. Uh, everyone will be separated. So we can discuss and talk about some of the things that you're dealing with today. Because you're fighting so many different spirits uh, and things that you're being confronted with in school and, and, and on your jobs and things like that. And so we want to deal with that from a biblical perspective to help you and to help uh, war against those spirits and that you're fighting against that have become the norm for society today. And so youth ministry, young adult ministry is so important and we're focusing, we're targeting that um, very uh, strongly. Um, so please send out the youth. You, you come, bring your friends, bring your high school friends, bring your school friends, bring your college friends that we can just sit and talk. We can sit and rap about, you know, things that are going through and help and, and helping the, the spiritual aspect of what we're going through uh, be imparted into our lives so we can help make it from day to day in this uh, generation that we are in. So please come on out. Uh, and share and focus on that. A uh, few of your announcements, and we, we're going to kind of keep it moving, uh, but there will be no Bible study on this Wednesday. Uh, the forecast is saying there is going to be snow, and then there's going to be a mixture of sleet and rain on uh, going into the evening on this Wednesday. So we're going to already let you know now, no Bible study on this Wednesday. All right, so, uh, so you already know that ahead of time uh, due to the weather forecast. There are many announcements on your your bulletin, please um, read those. Those who are going to the uh, the uh, workshop, leadership workshop conference this Saturday. Uh, if you have not already signed up, sign up um, for the vans. Uh, also, we'll be holding a workshop here, which you have the flyer uh, in front of you. That the Mount Holly Police and the Mount Holly Chaplain Program, we will be hosting it here. Uh, families in recovery. So if you know anybody, any families who are dealing with some people uh, who've been addicted uh, uh, to di different things, uh, we are hosting it here from 9 to 1 on this Saturday. So that will take place here. Come out and be a part of that. Some of the things that will be discussed uh, to help, you know, deal with some of the things that maybe you've been dealing with in your families or you might know someone um, that you might be uh, help there. So read that uh, announcement that's been given to you and that you might... Um, come and share in that event. Uh, on the first Wednesday of uh, March, we want to put it on your calendar, March 6th, uh, we will be having a presentation here uh, from Homeland Security on active shooters. I'm requiring that all officers, all ministry leaders, all be here for that. We're doing it on our Bible study night, so if that's the night, you usually come out anyway. Uh, so we're going to do it on that night. So it's, it, we, it's the invitation is to all of our Bible study uh, personnel who come out, all to anyone who comes out to Bible study, you're still welcome to it. It's open to all of our members to come out to it, um, but especially our leadership and everybody who's in ministry heads, you, it's required that you be here on that 
night uh, that we might hear from Homeland Security on active shooters. We just had an active shooting case just this past week, uh, again, uh, in the workplace. Uh, so these things are happening. It is relevant. And so we want to get uh, educated on it and be prepared uh, for in these events if it was to take place here. And it can't go by the saying, well, it never happened here. Uh, just when you think it had never happened here is when it will happen. And so we want to be prepared and have knowledge on it. So it is important and imperative that you come and, um, and be here. Uh, we have a great uh, active shooter uh, plan uh, being put in place. And so we ask that you come out and be a part of that night. So put that on your calendar for March 6th um, on that Wednesday night. Amen. Praise the Lord. You have all your other announcements. Please read them. Um, we do want to uh, announce to you that many of you know my aunt Naomi. Uh, she uh, is celebrating 89 years of life uh, uh, right now. I think yesterday or today or Friday, one of these days was her birthday. But we also want to let you know she has been put on hospice. Uh, so uh, keep her in your prayers. Keep your family in, in prayers. Uh, we brought her home on yesterday to celebrate her birthday, and we had a glorious and grand time with her yesterday, and she still has the great big smile on her face, and she was just happy to be around family and friends and all who came to share with her on yesterday. Uh, and so uh, we had to take her back uh, on yesterday evening, but she will be brought home for hospice this coming week. Uh, but so keep her in your prayers. Um, I will let you know she is asking. She loves our church so much. Uh, she is asking our church to serve at her funeral. Uh, she had asked me to ask our choir to sing. Um, I will be preaching her eulogy. We're going to hold it at her church, but she wants us. She loves us and wants us to be a part of it so much that she wants us. She asked, would I ask you, would you serve on that day of her homegoing service? Amen. And so we want to honor her. She's always been faithful to us at our Bible studies and anything that we had here other than Sunday morning. Uh, she was out of her own church, but she was always here for anything else uh, we always had. So we want to honor her uh, um, on that day that the Lord decides to take her home. I walked in her house yesterday. She said, you here to get me yet? I said, no. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not here to get you. I said, Lord, got to come get you first. I said, after he come get you, then I'll come get you. <laughs> But she still has her sense of humor, you know, she still says, but she says she's ready. She says, I'm ready. She said, come get me Jesus, you know, and so just keep her in your prayers. We just want her to be comfortable. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have a guest with us today. Uh, president of the Greater Delaware Valley Branch of the NAACP is with us today. Uh, Sister Edwina Sessions, uh, she's going to come and speak with us for a few moments. Amen. Uh, those are also in your announcements uh, that... Uh, I will be their keynote speaker. That's in your announcements. You can read that for yourself. Amen. Good morning, Second Baptist morning. of Mount Holly. And happy birthday to your first lady. <laughs> I'm here this morning to talk about the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP. You've heard about the NAACP all of, if not most of your lives. And they also had a birthday this past week on February 12th. They have been in existence for 110 years. <laughs> they were founded in 1909 on February the 12th. They were first called the Negro Committee Meeting and they were founded on, uh, on the backs of a lot of racial riots that were happening in the state of Illinois. And the NAACP felt as though we civil rights needed something or needed an organization to represent us for all of the things that we have gone through and have to go through and have been through. Right here in our own backyard, I'm going to skip right over to Burlington County. The NAACP has been challenged by many situations. Back in 1943, the NAACP had to come into Burlington City because they were refusing to allow blacks to sit at the lunch, lunch counters. 
1964, blacks demonstrated at the PSENG offices in Burlington because they were not hiring blacks. In 1958, there were marches to integrate Levittown, which is now known as Willingboro. In 1960, the NAACP had to make Mr. Levitt sell homes to blacks. He had to make the area give jobs to minorities. The NAACP's historic achievements are well documented. I don't have to remind you that we have anti-lynching laws, breaking the chains of Jim Crow. We suffered through the hood-wearing Ku Klux Klan, Bull Connor and his dogs, water hoses, tear gases on the people marching over the Edmund Pettus Bridge, the signs on the bathrooms and water fountains for whites only, denying service to those who wanted to sit at the lunch counter in the Woolworth. And we will never forget the murdering of Emmett Till, visiting his uncle in Mississippi that summer of 1955. And despite all the hate, Dr. Martin Luther King saw the hope. And he said, we can't drink from the cup of hope and hate, of, of, of hate and uh, desegregation. He said that we have to love each other. And out of that, we had rioting to uh, pretty much discriminate his wanting to have peace. So that's when the uprising of uh, Stokey Carmichael and H. Rap Brown came. The NAACP's historic achievements tried to fight for equal opportunity for all, not just for blacks, for all, Mexicans, uh, Hispanics. Our voting rights are still being attacked with gerrymandering. The voting districts in the community were still fighting against police bias and excessive force in some communities. And we still have issues plaguing our public schools. We had the shooting of Michael Brown in Missouri and the chokehold on Eric Garner the ultimately demise of Sandra Bland after she was stopped because her turn signal wasn't operating. And each time these things happen, it wakes us up. And we see it on the social media, we see it on Facebook, and we follow it on Twitter. And we still need more conversation about hate and prejudice, racial tensions. Just this month, painting black faces in KKK hoods came up in the news with the Virginia governor situation. And you know, we realize it's not over. It's, it's not over, you know. We, the NAACP has tried to fight for equal opportunity for all through it all. And today, today, the mission of the NAACP is to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of all peoples. We want to erase racial discrimination completely. The vision is to ensure society without racial discrimination for you, for me, for our children, and for our grandchildren. Until that happens, we need the NAACP to stay in the ring fighting for us blow by blow. We just can't tolerate racism or white supremacy, yet it still shows its ugly face. We can't let our rights be taken from us that our predecessors fought so hard for. And what we want, we want for everybody. Not just for us, for everybody. To end racial profiling. For Asians, Mexicans, blacks, Caucasians, to have programs to keep all youth away from gang activity in the streets. To improve our federal funding for schools. To have affordable health care for all, for all. To have gun control laws. Protect our kids in the schools. To protect Medicare and Medicaid benefits for senior citizens and, and disabled people, to protect social security. And the list goes on and on. We just want to be treated equal. We can't settle for anything less. We shouldn't have to. Thank you so much for listening. Amen. We thank Sister Sessions for coming and sharing with us a uh, brief history, amen, of the NAACP. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we'd like to welcome our visitors that are here with us today. If you're visiting with us today for the first or second time, we want you to stand. We're going to bring you the mic so we might hear from you. Amen. Because we're just so glad that you're here visiting with us today. Amen. So if you're here, we have one in the back there. We have one here. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Let's come over here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Over here. Amen. Amen. Hi, good morning. Good morning. My name is Sophia, and I'm here today by good and bad excuse. Amen. God bless your heart. Good morning, Madison. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Sorry. My name is Fred Lankin. I'm here to honor and visit with my best friend of all time. Chief Eugene Savage. His Amen. wife, Joyce. It's an honor to be here. He asked me to come to visit, and I jumped to the occasion. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Amen. God bless your heart. Amen. Well, we welcome both of you uh, to our worship today of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is our prayer that God will bless you and today in this worship experience and God will minister to your heart and to any other visitors and guests that are with us today. We welcome you to the worship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ here at Second Baptist Church. Amen. Now we're going to take two minutes. Amen. To fellowship <laughs> two, two, two. All right. Two minutes. All right. To fellowship with one another. And so you can get to move around and we're going to keep it moving. Amen. So you got two minutes. I will be back up here in two minutes. All right. So you got two minutes to fellowship. Amen. It's fellowship time.
ushers, open the door and let them in. Come on. I don't have no doubt y'all can get back to y'all seats. minutes is up. We are over. We got to move on. Y'all follow Second Baptist two minute time, so let's get to moving. Amen. One thing about coming to Second Baptist because it's a spirit-filled and spirit-led church. We are governed and directed by the Holy Ghost here, not by a piece of paper or program that we are so accustomed to. When you're governed by the Holy Ghost, things are subject to change because it's ordered by the Holy Ghost. Amen. So what that means, at this time, we're going to have our scripture reading. I know all y'all got your money in hand, ready to do your offering, but keep your money close by. We still going to take that. Don't let nobody fool you. Now, we still going to take that because that is still part of the scriptures. Amen. Tithes and offerings still belong to the Lord, but we're not going to do it just yet. We're going to do scripture first. If you could find Hebrews chapter 9. When you have found it, we want you to rest on your feet. Hebrews Chapter 9. That's in the New Testament. If you get over there to Revelations, you would look too far. Come back a few chapters and pages of a book or two, you'll find Hebrews. And for all you coffee lovers, it's still Shebrews in my house. Amen. <laughs> Because I'm still he that's the head. Amen. I'll be in trouble later, but I got it right now. Amen. <laughs> Pray for me. Amen. Hebrews chapter 9, starting at verse 9, says, Which was a figure for the time then present, in which we offered both gifts and sacrifices, that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ, being come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word to sanctify these truths in our hearts. Please remain standing for the prayer. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. If you're not standing, if you can stand, we're going to ask that you please stand as we look to the Lord and pray. We're not going to hold hands this morning. I asked the pastor, I was like, flu season is around. Amen. And we don't want to keep passing it, but we want to lift our hands. Amen. As we pray this morning. Hallelujah. Humbling ourselves and honoring God and just lifting our hearts and our, opening up our hearts and our minds just to receive what God has for us. So with our hands lifted right now, we come before God saying, God, we thank you right now, Lord. 
We thank you, God, for all that you're doing for us. Father, before we ask for anything right now, God, Father, we ask that you search our hearts and our minds, Father, and we ask for forgiveness, Father. God, if we've done anything that was not pleasing in your sight or according to your word of God, God, we ask that you forgive us right now. So, God, as we come before you, we want to have clear communication with you on this morning, God, as we seek your direction, God, for our lives, Father. God, we thank you, God, for all that we do, all that you've done for us, God. We thank you, God. God, we want to just be true worshipers for you right now, God. So we come lifting our hands, Father God, saying thank you, God, for all that you've gone to do, all that you've done, God. God, we thank you, God, for being the head of our lives, Father. We thank you, God, for going before us, God, going behind us, God, open doors, God, closing doors, God, that come to harm us, God. God, we said thank you, Lord. God, we thank you, God, for just being in the midst of this service on this morning, Father. We thank you, God, for your presence, God, for just reigning like never before this morning, Father, God. God, we just say thank you, God. God, we pray, God, for those, God, that are sick, God. Those that are on our prayer request list, Lord. Those that are here in the sanctuary, God, that don't feel well, Father God. God, we ask that you touch their bodies right now, God. God, send your healing power right now, God. God, we pray, God, for those, God, that have problems with their family, Father. Problems with their marriages, Father. With their children, Father. We pray, God, that you touch right now, God. And line it up according to your word, Father God. Hallelujah, God, we speak peace, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Those that are suffering from depression, God, God, we pray, God, that you lift their spirits, God. We rebuke it, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, you said you give us a sound mind, God, a spirit, God, that is not a fear, God, but a peace, God. Touch minds right now, God. We pray for our country, God. God, we know, God, only you can move on our behalf, God. So, God, we ask that you walk, God, for us, God. But, God, let us, God, as the Christians, God, to pray boldly, God, and stand according to your word of God. Hallelujah, God, that you, God, will take control, Father God. God, as our pastor stands to preach the word of God, God, we ask that you strengthen him right now, God, that you will speak through him, Father, that your anointing, God, will flow through him, God, that some soul will be changed on this morning God God we pray that you lift the spirits God break every chain God break every yoke Father God in the name of Jesus God we pray that you have your way God we pray that no one will leave here the same way God if there's someone here that does not know you Father God we pray God that their life will change God that they will learn God of you on this morning God and want you as head of their life Father God God, we thank you right now. God, we thank you, God, for all that you've done, all that you're going to do in this service, God. And we say, have your way, God. We surrender our will to you, Father God. We ask, God, that you lead and direct us, God, as we move forward, God, in your vision. God, let Second Baptist, God, be a beacon in this neighborhood. God, bless every ministry, God, that is going forth according to the vision of our pastor, Father God. Hallelujah, God, give us vision, God. Give us creativity, Father God, to do those things, God, that you have placed in our hands, Father. God, we thank you, God. And we count it an honor and a privilege, God, that you have chosen us, God. God, to work in your in your God and we pray God that you would just use us God to the glory God so that you will get the glory God out of everything everything that is said and done Father God that you will get the glory and we thank you God and we give you all the praise in Jesus name amen Praise the Lord and good morning. It's offering time. Hallelujah. It's offering time. I want to make sure everybody gets settled so you can participate in the blessings of God. Hallelujah. We come just to say, you know, thank you, Lord, that he has given us means of living. We have jobs. We may have other forms of income, but it's all because of the grace of God. 
nothing that we have done. And so it, we should be excited to come and give back to him what he so freely has given to us. And watch him bless it. Watch, watch God do math like never before. You know, I've taken statistics and this kind of math and that kind of math, but nothing could beat the math of God when you see him multiply the little into much. And we never want to take anybody else's little against ours because there's nothing little in the sight of God. So we want to honor him on this morning. We want to give back to him what he is so freely given to us because we know that no matter what, he is Jehovah Jireh in our lives. Amen? Amen. He will provide, and I'm a witness that he will. Place your offerings in your hands, and as we look to God, God, we just come this morning, God, just to say thank you. God, we thank you that you allowed us to this place of worship. God, to bring our tithes and our offerings to the storehouse. God, we just ask that you bless it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, let it be continue to be used to, for the building of your kingdom, oh God. God, touch every hand and every heart. And God, a special blessing for every heart and every hand that have nothing to give right now. God, you shake things up in their life, oh God, so that when they come back, God, they have something to give and render unto you. God, we just ask that you bless, oh God, and we seal it with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. You're now in the hands of the trustees.
son for me. In the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace, troubles vanish, hearts are mended in the presence of the King. We've been dealing with when I come into the presence and into his presence. A couple weeks ago, we dealt with preparation for coming into his presence. In retrospect, ought to prepare us to come into the worship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That we ought to make preparation before even coming to church. Before coming into so-called the presence of God in the sanctuary with the other saints of God. I need you to understand that his presence does not only dwell here. As in the Old Testament, in the tent of meetings, in the tabernacle, where his presence dwelt, which was a foreshadow of the New Testament, that he only dwelt in the tabernacle. He only dwelt in the tabernacle, in the tent of meetings. But today he, dw he, dwell he dwells in us. So therefore, our preparation is not only to come here into the sanctuary, but our preparation should be every morning that when we rise, when we open our eyes, we ought to ask, as David asked in the prayer of the Psalms 51, to cleanse our hearts. That if anything that I've done, God, against you, I realize and I acknowledge my sins and my sins are ever before me. Cleanse me now from all unrighteousness. For I have sinned against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this unrighteousness, this unjustly act, these unjustly acts in thy sight. Lord, cleanse me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. That thy, bro, that thy bones that thou broken now may be made holy. That I might tell others of your goodness, of your mercy. And so if we pray that prayer every day, we pray that prayer, then we are in, we prepare ourselves to be in the presence of Almighty God. And so collectively, when we come to church on Sunday morning, it takes our worship to a whole nother level. It takes our concept of worship to another place. That as we, each and every one of us, if each and every one of us could prepare, prepare ourselves, that when I come into the sanctuary, when I join in with my brothers and my sisters, it takes my concept, it takes my worship to another level. If every one of us, as stated in Acts chapter number two, that when they were in one place, in one accord, that the Holy Spirit fell on each and every one. The Bible says it fell on each and every one of them. And the house was filled. Can you imagine if we were to prepare ourselves, every one of us was to prepare ourselves to come into one place and be in one accord, what the Spirit of God can do? Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right. That, that's why if you prepare yourself to come into the worship, let me tell you, your preparation just may help the person sitting next to you. Because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they're dealing with. And perhaps they could not get into that place. But because you have prepared yourself that when the presence of God falls on you and the glory of God is revealed out of you, it might just shake up that person next to you. That person who comes in hurt, that person who comes into depressed, that person who seems like they just can't break out of what's keeping them bound, what's keeping them trapped. It just may be by your praise, it may be by just your worship that releases them. That spirit that's been battling them, that spirit that's been capturing them, that spirit that's just been uh, uh, influencing them just by your worship and the presence of the spirit of God being in you just might release that spirit out of them. And that's why it's important that we prepare ourselves for worship. That when we come into the presence of God, and that what our theme is right now, coming into his presence, 
that in the presence of Jehovah, in the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace, Troubles Vanish, Hearts Are Mended. The presence of the King. Will you worship Him with me right now? In the presence of Jehovah. God Almighty, Prince of Peace, Troubles Van, Broken Hearts. Amen. In the presence of the King. Just lay your hands on your shoulder of the person next to you. In the presence. presence right now. He's God Almighty, Prince of Peace. Right now, something's about to happen. Your troubles are going to vanish if your heart's been broken. Hearts are mended in the presence of the King. Hallelujah. 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 said amen. amen. The enemy has us fooled. Hallelujah. There are some things that many of us of you, many of us are dealing with that the enemy has us perplexed. 
the spirit of God wants you to know that there's no greater spirit than his spirit. And the fact that we are in his presence right now and we're worshiping him in spirit and in truth. That even the perplexity and even the confusion of what the enemy tries to put into our minds. God is greater than any other spirit. God is greater than any trouble, situation, circumstance. God is greater than your husband. He's greater than your wife. He's greater than your boyfriend, your girlfriend. He's greater than your children. He's greater. And greater is he that is in you than he that is within the world. Psalm of David. But there was a process of when they came into the tent of meetings or the tabernacle. And I think it's ironic how the Bible deals with two chapters of the creation. But it deals with over 50 chapters of the tabernacle and that the tabernacle that was constructed by Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 39 and chapter 40 God gave explicit instruction of how the tabernacle was to be designed and that tabernacle was a foreshadow of the New Testament it was a foreshadow of Christ In Leviticus chapter number 10, the two sons of Aaron who decided they wanted to enter into God's presence their own way. The Bible says that fire came out from the altar and consumed them. Many theologians debate that by saying, well, that was Old Testament. But if we read the scriptures correctly, the Old Testament is a foreshadow of the New Testament. So therefore, we need to understand, and as I always instruct people, that the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So whether you're saved, whether you're not saved, whether you're a Christian, whether you're a Muslim, whether you're Buddhist, I don't care what you are, the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, how someone's not saved. It is the fact because the Bible says that the that the body or this body which was created uh, out of the dust of the ground, uh, out of the dust of the ground, goes back to the ground. But the life which is inside the body, which was breathed into man when God created Adam, is the same breath that God takes back. So therefore, as the body belongs to the ground, the spirit still belongs to God. Whether you're saved, whether you're unsaved, God gave it and God takes it away. And so therefore, when you give out your last breath, God takes back that breath because it belongs to him. Well, it's at that time, because of what you've done in life, that Leviticus chapter number 10 comes into play here because now you're coming into the presence of God. Somebody ought to catch this. That whether you're saved or whether you're unsaved, you're coming into the presence of God. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 10 that the fire came out from the altar of God and consumed them because they came in the wrong way. 
Well, in the Bible, according to the book of John, the Bible says that now that when we come into the presence of God, that because if we're not saved, that's when God says to us, either enter into the joy of the Lord or depart from me, you worker of iniquity. And when he says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, to the one that is not saved, to the one that don't know him, now eternal judgment is still fire. Because you cannot be in the presence of God any kind of way. And so therefore, the Old Testament is a foreshadow of the New Testament. And so therefore, theologians cannot say just because that happened in the New Testament doesn't happen in the, I mean, because it happened in the Old Testament, it doesn't happen in the New Testament. It still happens in the New Testament. It just happens in the presence of God when the spirit is released from the body. Are you with me, somebody? And so it's so important that even in life and how at the end of life, God determines where we go because we're in his presence. So therefore, the presence of God and when we're in the presence of God is very significant in our lives. It's very significant in our daily life, in our daily walk. It's very significant in our coming together in worship. The Bible says that he that God instructed Moses to develop and to construct a tabernacle to develop what they call the tent of meetings. The Bible says in John chapter number one, the Bible says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That word dwelt actually means tabernacle. So therefore, in the Old Testament, where they tabernacle together in the tent of meetings to, 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 to invoke the presence of God and to be in the presence of God, the Bible says now that because Christ has come and dwelt among us, he has now come to tabernacle with us. So therefore, the Bible tells us now that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And now he dwells in us. He tabernacles with us. So therefore, the presence of God is not only when we get here. All right, all right, all right. The presence of God is not only in these four walls. Matter of fact, we could be in these four walls and his presence never comes here. Because if the presence of God is not in us as we come together to worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why it's always my prayer that my worship is true. I come to work collectively with my brothers and my sisters in Christ. And I want my worship, I want our worship to be true to God. And all of us are significant to that call. As we prepare ourselves to come together in worship. So therefore, your worship begins with you. Your worship begins in your home. Your worship begins before you even get here. And that's why when the Bible says that we enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his court with praise, I can enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise because I've already worshiped. And sometimes it takes worship to break you out of what you've been dealing with. Is anybody with me? I'm not even preaching what I'm supposed to preach today. It takes worship because some of us are dealing with some, some stuff. Some of us are dealing with some issues. Some of us are dealing with husbands, wives, children, job situations. We're dealing with some stuff. And let me tell you, it takes worship. As the songwriter said, in the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace, troubles vanish. Hearts are mended in the presence of the King. And some of us are dealing with some heavy stuff. Some of us are dealing with some heavy issues. Some of us are dealing with some troubling spirits. Are you with me, somebody? 
Because you need to realize that a lot of those things that you're dealing with is a spirit. Spirits that are trying to attack your home. Spirit that is trying to attack you. Spirit that are trying to attack your children. Spirits that are trying to attack your wife, your husband. Spirits that just won't leave you alone. Have I got a witness in here? And sometimes we're not getting, we're not breaking free from it and being released from it because we're not worshiping. Worship is the only way you're going to get out of it. It's good to praise God. Y'all hear me? It's good to praise God, but praise ain't going to get you out of everything. Because you can have a whole lot of praise going on in church and nothing happens. It takes place through worship. You need to understand, my praise comes after my worship. You got to understand that. And that's why some of us are not breaking free and getting out of what we've been dealing with because we want to praise our way out, but we haven't worshiped. You got to worship God for who he is. So I'm worship him as Jehovah. I worship him as my burden bearer. I worship him as my king of kings. I worship him as my lord of lords. I worship him as the greatest of who he is. I worship him as my healer. I worship him as my deliverer. I worship him as Jehovah for who he is. My praise it's because of what he's done and what he's doing and what he will do. But I got to first worship him for who he is. Somebody needs to get this. I can't be delivered if I first don't know he's a deliverer. I can't be healed if I first don't realize he's a healer. So I can't just praise for my healing. I just can't praise for my deliverer if I haven't worshiped the deliverer. If I haven't worshiped the healer. If I haven't worshipped Jehovah Rapha, if I haven't worshipped Jehovah, uh, Jehovah Shikhtanu, if I haven't worshipped Jehovah, who he is, my healer, my deliverer. So I got to first know who he is and worship him and know that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly anything I'm able to ask because first I know who he is. And so that's why my worship of him is so important. That after I worship him, I can come into his gates with thanksgiving. Because I'm already worshiped. I can come in and have a praise in the court. Because I've already worshiped. Is anybody with me today? My assignment is to take your worship to a totally another level. That the worship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ ought to be at such another level in this place that when we come together, we ought to experience the presence and the outpouring of the Spirit of God from Sunday to Sunday. As the as songwriter said, when all God's children get together. What a time, what a time, what a time. And what makes it a time? Because God's been so good to you. God has delivered you. God has healed you. God has given you joy. God has given you peace. And when one can testify, I know God's been good to me. And the next one can testify, oh, he ain't only been good to you, sister. He ain't only been good to you, brother, but he's been good to me. I got a testimony. I'm a witness to tell you how good God's been to me.
you, you ought to be a bragger. There ain't nothing wrong with bragging. You ought to brag about how good God's been to you. You ought to brag about how he helped you, how he delivered you. You ought to brag about God. Because can't nobody. Have I got a witness in here? I tried. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. Nobody. Have I got a witness in here? Searched all over. Tried this. And I tried that. Couldn't find nobody who could do me like my Lord Jesus. Couldn't find nobody. I've looked and I searched. Couldn't find nobody. So I don't know about you, but I got a testimony to tell you how good God's been to me. How he brought me through. Couldn't find nobody. Well, my wife should have left me. She stayed right there. When my husband should have left me, he stayed right there. Couldn't find nobody, but it wasn't nobody but the Lord. Who brought healing. Who brought deliverance. When I was broken. When I was shattered. Couldn't find nobody. Nobody but the Lord. Have I got a witness in here? Has anybody been in a broken place? Has anybody been in a broken place? And you searched all over. But you couldn't find the answer. Couldn't find your deliverance. Couldn't find your peace. Couldn't find your joy. But God held you and kept you. Somebody need to worship him right now. Worship is in the place right now. God is healing right now. God is delivering white right now because we're in a spirit of worship. This message is a worship message. This, this message is a worship experience because somebody's been in a broken place and somebody need to look back and know if it hadn't been for the Lord that he bought my healing, he bought my deliverance. I wouldn't be where I am and who I am if it hadn't been for the Lord. I can't take for granted right now. I can't take for granted right now. I'm speaking to somebody right now. If it hadn't been for the Lord, God bring me back to that place. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. 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 Worship is so important. It's so significant. I need to worship God for being who you are. I need to worship you as you have designed it according to the Old Testament. And that you bring us into the New Testament. My worship God right now will bring my deliverance, will bring my healing. I need to understand that my worship, that your spirit is greater than any other spirit. So because of what I'm going through, dealing with situational, God is greater. He's greater. He's greater. He's greater. And so when the worship, when I worship together, I can hear the testimonies of others. I can hear the testimonies of my sisters and my brothers. And I can look and say, I got a better one for you. And I know God's been good to you. I know what God has done for you. But let me tell you, if you only knew what I've been through, if you only knew my story, if you only knew, if it had not been for the Lord. And I got to realize it today. If I haven't realized it before, I got to realize it today. If it had not been for the Lord, that even when I wasn't doing right, even when I wasn't doing according to what his word said, if I, God still kept me and I'm here today, you know what? I do got
got a testimony today. That's what worship will do. You got to worship him. The spirit of God is falling on you right now. Because the spirit of worship is in this place. The spirit of worship is in this place and it's being released out of you and connecting with somebody else. Somebody else is feeling it right now. They can't understand it. They're trying to hold it in. But let me tell you something. God is trying to break you free of what had you bound, what had you trapped. The spirits that is still trying to confuse your mind to make them think that they're greater than, they're, than he who is God. Greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus, God. Worship is so vital to your Christian life, to your Christian walk. I want, ver I want worship to have a new significance to your life, not only on Sunday morning, but daily life. And that's why God so much talked about the tabernacle and how you come into the tabernacle how you come into the presence of God how you come into worship God and so that's why it's so significant and so important how we worship him how we prepare ourselves to come in and worship him and how we worship him when we get into this place when we get into his presence whether we're home whether wherever we are and whether we come together how we come into his presence that we come in the right way that we worship God. I want to break free. I want to be free. I want to be free from what has me perplexed, what has me confused. I want to be free from the issues that come at me every day. I can be free. I want to be free in my mind, free in my spirit. Know that greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. And that it will only come through my worship experience. So I can come together, I can come into his gates with a thanksgiving in my heart and come into his court with praise on my lips because I've already worshipped him for who he is. I already worship him for being God. I already worship him for being Jehovah. I already worship him for being Adonai. I already worship him for being Yahweh. I already worship him for being my shepherd. I worship him for being my provider. I worship him for being my deliverer. I worship him for being my healer. I worship him for just being my keeping power. So I can come together and I can praise and I can have a testimony that when we come together, the spirit of God can fall on every one of us and fill this house. That he fills us so much that others on the outside will take notice that there's not only been a change in this place, but there's a change in me. There's a change in you. There's a change in every one of us. That when we leave out of here, the glory of God is still all over us. That when we go to work, the glory of God is still all over us. When we talk to our friends, the glory of God is all over us. And every hindering spirit, every contrite spirit, every spirit that's not like God, every spirit that when we come against that spirit, even just by the fact that when we come into their presence, it shakes up that spirit it wakes up those demonic influences that it breaks those chains that it breaks those bondages that it breaks those things just because you're in the presence of Jehovah so it's about you and God it's about your intimate worship it's about your personal worship It's how you prepare to enter in his presence. That when we come together, we follow the process. Personal, intimate. And right now, God is speaking to somebody. God is touching someone right now. God is ministering to someone right now. God's throwing some things around in somebody's mind right now. Don't try to understand it. Just submit to it. Don't try to worry about the details of where you're going to go from here. Just submit to the will of God that he's speaking to you right now. Just, just submit your will. That's why we raise our hands to worship him. We raise our hands to surrender. We raise our hands to receive. Right now, I just need you to surrender to him. Just surrender to him. Just surrender to him. Be obedient to what the spirit of God is speaking to you right now. That is the spirit of God speaking to you right now. Just surrender to him right now. Surrender to him right now. 
Let this worship experience release you from what's been holding you release you for what's been keeping your mind captive release you what's for what's been keeping you bound for so many years release you from what's been keeping you in a certain place for so many years let the spirit of worship right now release you right now for what you think has become so prevalent in your life that you nothing was going to change nothing it was going to be different but today it's going to be different because god's going to free you from whatever been keeping you trapped and bound for so long somebody needs right now to be released hallelujah because we're in the tabernacle. We're in the tent of meetings. And the spirit of God and the presence of God is here right now. Hallelujah. So if God is speaking to your heart right now. Don't worry about the details. Just surrender to him and say, listen, God, I'm going to leave this up to you. But right now I'm going to surrender to you so now you can operate in my life operate in my situation operate in my mind in my spirit operate in what's been holding me for so many years that is I, I've been I've been dealing with this and handling it for so long it almost became the norm of my life that the enemy even have you comfortable but you know there's just been a spirit inside of you that's just been not right all these years. Because you know you haven't really been obedient to God. The spirit of worship right now, God say he's not holding anything against you. He just wants you to be free. He wants you to be, he wants to release you right now. He said all you got to do is submit to him and give to him right now. He will heal you. He will deliver you. He will restore your joy. He will restore your peace if you just surrender right now. As we all stand, as we lift our hands to worship God, your worship right now just may be the deliverance of somebody else right now. So I need some people who know how to intercede right now. I need some people right now who will put themselves aside and say, I'm going to intercede on behalf of someone else right now. I need someone to worship God right now in intercession. Because there's somebody here right now who wants to come. But the spirit is holding, there's a spirit holding them. And I need you to pray for that spirit of release. That God will release them to come. Not only to be saved. Because there's some of you, there's most of you who are already saved. You're already born again. You already know God. But you've just been trapped. You've been held by a spirit that's just been holding you for so long. And today is your day of release. You, you're not a bad person. Matter of fact, you're a good person. But it's just been that little thing that seemed little that kept you from getting to the place that you really need to be at. That the enemy had made you seem that that was normal for your life. But today God said no. There's another place for you. There's another joy, a level of joy, a level of peace. That I want you to abide in because you're in my presence. If you're here today. I'm going to give three invitations. And whatever invitation fits your situation. I want you to just move right out and come. Don't let the enemy keep you where you are or make you think twice about it. I just need you to step out. And if God is already speaking to you, step out before I even give an invitation because you know why you need to come. The first invitation is for the one that is not saved. God has spoken to your heart today. And you realize something today that you never realized before. That God wants to dwell in you. He wants to be your savior. He wants to save you because you don't want to get before him when you die. And he said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. But you want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. So if you're here today and you're not saved, because you're in the presence today, 
We want you to come and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for you, who replaced the Old Testament tabernacle, and he became the tabernacle for you. If you're here today, we want you to come and give your life to Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you're not saved, you come. Secondly, it's for the person who's been seeking your church home. And today, God has spoken to your heart. This is where I need you to be. I want to elevate you to another place of worship. I want to elevate you to another place of learning and teaching. And today, this is where God has spoken to your heart. This is where he wants you to be. I want you to come. You want to unite here with us. Thirdly, it's for the one. You've been that one who's been trapped, who's been bound. Deacons and deaconess, would you come please? You've been that one who's been kind of held back for so long. And today you say, you know what? I'm going to put my manhood aside. I'm going to put my womanhood aside. I'm going to put my pride aside. And I'm going to get back to God. God is speaking right now to your heart. Come on. Come rededicate yourself. Recommit yourself to him today. You've been broken, but you want to be healed. Come on today. Come on. Come on. Make that decision today. I've been out, but now I'm coming back. I've been dysfunctional, but now I'm going to function. I'm coming back today. And I don't care who's looking at me. I don't care what you think. This is about me and God. If you're here today, will you come? Come on. Come on. Come on. It's about me and God. Come on. I need you to come today. You're in a place of worship. Come on. Let the spirit of God, the worship experience here today. Let the presence of God that's in this worship minister to your heart today. Come on. Come on. Come on. If you're here today, will you come? Come on. The person who needs to rededicate themselves. The person who just want to recommit yourself to God. I'm not saying you got to recommit yourself to this church. Recommit yourself to God. And let God worry about the details. You just come on. Come on. Come on. You realize what God has done in your life. You realize that God has kept you even though you haven't been in the place with God. But God has still kept you. If you're here, come on. Come on today. Come on today. There's somebody else here. There's somebody else here. Come on. God is speaking to you today. Come on. Come on. If you want to come and something inside you is saying come in, but something is just holding you back, you can look to your neighbor and say, will you go off with me? Will you go with me? I want to go. I want to go, but I'm a, I, I'm a little hesitant. Grab them by the hand. If you want to step out right now, just grab them by the hand and say, come on, go with me. Come on. Come on. Come on. If you don't want to come by yourself, grab your neighbor by the hand and say, come on with me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Grab them by the hand and say, come on with me. I want to go. I want to go. I do want to go. God has been good to me. I realize it. And I know I haven't been in the place that I should be. But today, come on and go with me. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, come on, walk with me. Stay with me. Stay close to me. Hold my hand while I go. And they will do that. Come on. So you don't have to be by yourself. Come on. Get back to that place. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There's somebody else here who needs to get to that place. Come on. The spirit of worship's in here. The presence of God is here for you right now. God cares so much about you. He loves you so much that he's calling you personally right now. He's calling you personally right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't let, a, don't let another week pass you by. Don't let another Sunday pass you by. And you know God's been speaking to you. God's been just doing something in you. You know something's been different inside of you. Don't wait any longer. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Come on, you will change, your life will change today. Your family will change today. Your situation will change today. Your household will change today. Everything will change today by you submitting to the will of God today. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You need to understand that the Spirit of God is greater than any other spirit you've been dealing with. The Spirit of God is greater than any other spirit you've been fighting. The Spirit of God is greater than any other spirit. So come on today and get with the Spirit of God. He'll take care of the rest. Come on. Somebody else is here. I'm waiting for you. I'm taking this time just for you. I'm praying just for you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, somebody come. I'm giving one. We're going to sing that one more time. Because there's somebody still a little hesitant. Grab your neighbor by the hand and ask them to walk with you. You want to go, but something's keeping you where you are. Just grab their hand. And say, come on, walk with me. Come on, go with me. Yeah, yeah, yes. I want each and every one of you in a really nice and soft way. Just ask the person next to you, say, would you like to go? I'll go with you. Just ask them. If they say yes, bring them out and come on with them. Because something just may be keeping them there. So come on. If they say yes to you, then come on with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. God's here. He's moving now. Will you come? Don't wait any longer. Don't let another Sunday pass you by. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. I give you this last opportunity to come with today. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this place. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God. If you just can't sit down and something is making you get up and come, come on. Come on. It's never closed to you. Come on. If while we're even talking, the Spirit of God ministered to you and said, you know what? I need to be up there with the mothers. Then you just come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I promise you next week we will get into the meat of this message. Amen. We will get into the substance of this message. So you can understand that what we even talked about today. The significance according to scripture. We'll get into the meat of it. I promise you next Sunday. But you know, as Reverend Chikochi said, that I had to be led by the spirit of God. And God wanted to minister in that way on today. I'm not giving any excuse. Because I praise God for what he's done because of obedience. And because of obedience, this is what God does. Because God ministers in different ways, in certain ways to certain people. Amen. And, and I, as pastor, I don't know what you need. But God knows. So God uses me to be able to speak to you. And God knows just what you need. He knows just what you need. Just like a doctor knows just the medicine you need for whatever condition you're in. God knows what you need. And God uses me as a physician today to give to you the medication. He gives to you what you need today. And so there's still, I, I, God is still speaking. There's still somebody here who needs to get up and come right now. You've just been waiting too long. You need to come on today. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Do we have a mic? Amen. He's got one. He's got one? Okay. he got one before my hands. Okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on. Let's give all those who are here, for whatever reason they're here, let's give them our hand. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Let's start on this end. Praise the Lord. Reverend Hutton and the entire 
Second Baptist Church family. We have before us Nancy and Brian Gale. Amen. Come on, let's give the Gales a hand. Amen. Amen. Coming to us from St. Mark United Methodist Church under Christian experience. Amen. God bless your hearts. Amen. We thank God for the girls. They've been worshiping with us for a long time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Always excited when we see them. Amen. And we're so glad that today God has spoke to your heart to become a part of this ministry, a part of this fellowship. And we're excited about having you. Amen. God bless your hearts. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Saints, this is Brother Dwayne Morgan. He just wants to let everybody know he's going to recommit his life to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless your heart. Amen. What's his name? Dwayne Morgan. Brother Dwayne Morgan. Amen. Give the brother the mic. He got a testimony. I really, I really had no intentions of doing this. Um, today when I woke up, I was left to come to church. Amen. I didn't know why. I didn't know what it was for. I've been following God for two strong years. It's been difficult. But today, I, I don't know, I was led to come here, and when, and when I came and you started to preach, I felt the presence of God, something, mm. something phenomenal. And I just really believe that the reason why I'm standing here right now, because from just looking out, I've seen a lot of young faces. I've seen a lot of young faces that i never seen, like, when I go to church. I'm, I'm 33 years old, and it's not normal for a man 33 years old to stand here and to worship God the way that I'm willing to. But I feel as if I'm speaking to the young men out there to just say, like, we literally at a time in our life where it doesn't matter what people think anymore. Hallelujah! personal relationship. Don't yeah. worry about what anybody else That's it. Get your personal relationship. Find a quiet place. Find that room. Find that closet. Even in your bathroom. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Just get that personal relationship with God. I just feel as if it's our time. Young men, it's our time. Let's go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody ought to bless God up in here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God is still speaking. Hallelujah. That's what happens when you're in the presence. That's what happens when you're in the presence. God is still speaking because we're in his presence. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Glory. Mm, mm, mm. My God, my God, my God. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Ah. Mm. Praise God. Bless you, bless you. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Hey, hey, Hi. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Mm. Bless the Lord. My God, my God. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. Bless God, bless God. My prayer is that every one of you who is watching us 
by live stream right now that you are experiencing the presence of God in this place. That even as you're watching us by live stream, while you're watching us by camera, the Spirit of God is falling on you, even right now, in the name of Jesus. Hey, 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 hey. Ho. Thank you, God. Mm. Bless the Lord. My God, my God, my God. Yeah. Look what God is doing in this place. Yeah, he's bringing deliverance. He's bringing healing. Yeah. Oh, God, my God. somebody know in here what you hear and hear what you experience here this ain't fake news there ain't nothing fake about what's happening in this place today this is fact because get your facts straight because I know where the Lord has brought me from I know what the Lord has done in my life Ain't nothing fake about it. That's fact. Because if you only knew, somebody ought to give God glory and praise in this place. My God, my God, right, my God. Woo! I I'm just waiting to hear what's next. My God, there's such a spirit of expectancy I got right now. God is taking us to another level, each one. Praise the Lord. My God, my God. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> yes, sir. My God. Second Baptist Church family. We have Brother Fred Lampkin coming on a Christian experience. Beulah like Baptist Church, Betonia, Mississippi. <laughs> Woo! Praise the Lord. Brother Fred. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody I'll give God glory. He came by to visit us today. And look what God has done today. God spoke it to him today that this is the place he wants him to be. And we're excited about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. You want anything to say, brother? Amen. Well, like my good friend, Chief Stanford, saying I came on Christian Experience. Turn it up, please. And I've been out of the church for a while, and I miss it so greatly. When Officer Stanford 
came to me and I said, you know, this is a message. It's coming to me. And I work in a pretty unique job. I, I am at the front door of the cancer center. And I see cancer uh, patient come in every single day. And I thought, you know, I thought at some point I had issues, I had problems, because my little life wasn't where I wanted to be. Mm. But then, when I saw these people walking through, some on canes, some on walkers, some couldn't walk at all. And I thought, praise God. I thank you, Jesus. I need to get back to where you can empower me. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. To just lift them up just a little bit on a daily basis. I thought my little concerns was an issue. I had no issues at all. Mm. When they walk through that door and I see them, they can hardly walk. To Jesus, have mercy. Mm. Have mercy. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank mm. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give God glory. Give God praise. Hallelujah. God bless your heart. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you God. Yes, God. Mm. Oh, yes. Glory, 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 glory. Yes, God, thank you. Woo, glory, thank you. Mm, mm, mm. Bless your name. Pastor in the Second Baptist. Mm. When I came in this morning for Sunday school, I met this gentleman. He said, good morning. I said, hello. He said, hello. And just something about it happened this morning. His name is Jason Iges. He was a member of St. Paul, Florence. But he's coming to join Second Baptist Mount. Amen. God bless your heart. Amen. Amen. God bless your heart, my brother. Amen. Brother Jason, right? Brother Jason, amen. God bless your heart. We, we just pray and believe that God sent you here for a purpose. Amen. We believe that. Amen, because we don't believe God sends anybody here by accident. It's by his divine decree and his divine purpose that you are here today. And it is our prayer that that purpose is fulfilled in you and that purpose grows in you. Amen. As you continue to worship God and, and as we continue to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. I just want to pray with you. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for my brother. Hallelujah, God. Thank you. Yes. God, I pray that you speak into his life. Increase him, God. Take him to another level of worship in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for him. We are, oh, yes, we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless your heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Pastor and the Second Baptist Church family, we have to my left, Janesha Davis. Janesha is coming as a candidate for baptism. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Look at that smile on her face. She's excited about that. Amen. And to my right, we have Titina Miller. Tiana Miller. Tiana. She Amen. is a candidate for baptism. God bless your heart. Look at these smiles. Amen. Praise God. Amen. For our young people. Amen. As they realizing that they need Jesus in their life. Amen. Praise God for both of you. Bless your heart. Y'all so both so precious. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray God's anointing on your lives. Amen. God's keeping power. God's blood over your lives. Amen. From this day forward. Amen. You've been under his ark of safety, but now you're under his blood covering right now. In the name of Jesus, because of the decision you have made today. Amen. Be obedient. Amen. To God's word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to give the girls an opportunity if y'all want to say something. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know I'm Brian. 
<laughs> we just we wanted to let you know that from the first time we came in here, we never felt so loved, so cared for, so embraced as a family. And we just want to give that back. We just want to share that back with you. We, we, today we've got a family of 150, 200 extra people in our family. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Again, I'm Nancy. God has shown his miracles to me in so many different ways. And this is just another one of his miracles. Thank you all. I love you all. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, let's give everybody a hand who's here. Give the Lord praise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Wherever you're standing, those who are standing here, grab each other by the hand. Amen. Everybody grab each other by the hand and let's lift up hands. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lift up hands. Amen. Unless you're sick, then don't touch that person next to you. <laughs> Keep your germs to yourself. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. May the grace of God and his sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with you now and forever. May the grace of God and the presence of God remain with you and be with you as we continue to worship and praise him through this entire week. Till we meet again in this fellowship. I want you with uplifted hands. I want this. Let the church sing together. Let the church say amen. Let's sing it like we never sang it before. Say amen. Let the church say, let's, let's rock and roll it. Come on. Come on. Let the church say, oh, let's sing it, let's sing it, let the church say, let the church say. God has spoken. Let the church. Oh, God has spoken. Come on and sing it. Because he spoke today. Let the church. Say amen. Oh, God. Let the church. Bless your heart. We'd like to know if anybody has found.